sucks to be so pathetic. This is so depressing to me because my face is very asymmetrical. Am I ugly? What's up guys? You know what time it is. Today, we're looking at some TikTok art tips and making sure the information on TikTok is safe for the babies. We're protecting the babies. First one up, we got color tutorial, I guess, LOL. Tutorial, I guess, law. First draw a sexy sketch and add flat colors. Then decide where the direct and reflected light will be. Okay. Pick your shadow color by following the red arrows. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Block shadows with a hard brush. Oh. Then Ooh. pick your highlight this way. Use a softer brush and apply your highlights. Ooh. Tip, use triangle to shade folds. And finally pick the... Re I love triangles for clothing. So good. Reflected light like this. Yippee, it's almost done. Finish with Ooh. some details and voila. Congrats. Hold up. Bro, that's beautiful. That's a fantastic video. 10 out of 10. You start off with the light and the shadow as two simple, solid colors. Okay, don't overwhelm yourself. You, where is it? Your brain can only process so much information at once. And when you're drawing, it's so important to simplify. Don't overwhelm it, okay? Two base colors, highlights, reflected light. Use triangles and your clothing will be Painting a reference like this, it's easy to get overwhelmed by all the detail. So here- This is Rishi Draws. My mortal enemy. Here are four tips for painting complicated scenes in program. Number one, use a grid. A grid can help break your scene up into smaller, less intimidating chunks. It will help you place your major landmarks accurately. I have a video on how to properly set up a grid in Procreate, so check that out. Number two, simplify your values. For example, for something complicated like a car, paint in the main silhouette, then add some yes. large mid-tone values. After that, define yes. details with your very lightest and your very darkest values. Up close, it may look like a mess, but at a normal distance, it'll be just fine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's how I paint all my cars. Number three, remove unnecessary objects from your scene. Unlike a portrait where you may need accuracy to capture likeness, with a landscape or a city scene, you have more freedom to change things and even remove things that don't serve the final composition. And finally, number four, place most of your detail around your focal point. For me, that was this region right here because that's where I wanted my viewers' eyes to focus. Now the first tip about using grids, I don't like to recommend grids to people it's good to figure out how to draw accurately, but it also tends to lead to tunnel vision when it comes to painting more complex scenes. At least for me, when I try it out, I tend to just hyper-focus on one single grid and I forget about what's around it and then things just don't line up and it's just not as harmonious as I want it to be. So if you can, try to do it without a grid, but if you absolutely must use a grid to get it accurate, mm, it sucks to be so pathetic. How do you blend oil pastels so well? I hate oil pastels. Oh, finger, ooh, ooh. I don't know how many of you guys have tried drawing traditionally with oil pastels, but it's one of the worst experiences you can have. Now, if you're at a point in your career where you decide, I don't wanna be an artist anymore, I want to become a doctor. Just try drawing with oil pastels. That'll make you want to change your career instantly. One of my OG hacks as an artist that I learned from probably like the first art class I ever took is when you can't get your proportions right, flip your drawing upside down. It forces your mind to stop thinking about what you should draw and start looking at what you're actually drawing. Ooh. One of my OG hacks. Ooh. I, it's the, oh. You know, there is some truth to this point. When you flip your canvas, whether it be horizontally or vertically, you're forcing your brain to see the image from a new perspective. And in doing so, you can often find mistakes that you just weren't able to spot before. But I would personally recommend that you flip it horizontally instead of vertically. Because seeing something, especially if you're drawing portraits, seeing it flipped vertically, you end up looking at a bunch of nonsense. This is like a five out of 10 for being a half truth. Different ways to draw stars. Mmm, cute, cute. This is my favorite. Oh, oh. I think you forgot a method. Drawing me, get it? Cause I'm a star. <laughs> Why art tips don't work. A TikTok art tips video about why art tips don't work, of course, only on TikTok. Some of these art tip videos require you to have a solid understanding of art fundamentals. True, and having the patience to suck at art for a while, yes. If you find that some of these videos you watch make no sense, slow them down, study them, Google the keywords and learn. The most important thing you must do is draw you cannot learn how to ride a bicycle by watching others do it. So this is very true, very true. 
Our tips videos won't work if you don't put in the effort to learn. Yep, have patience and you will grow. That's, that's 10 out of 10, fantastic, wow. You deserve so much more than you have, have my like. Now, we are watching TikTok art tips videos, but here's the thing, no matter how many videos we watch, how many tips we consume, it's not gonna do anything for you to have this information unless you put it into practice. When you see a video or learn about something that really inspires you, don't be lazy. Pick up your pen, pick up your tablet, and draw. Put it into practice. Want to know how to find your art style using Pinterest? Okay. Pinterest is an incredible platform. Okay, so here's a word of advice. We're 25 seconds into a TikTok video and you haven't even got to the first tip yet. Gather yourself, breathe, get it together, please. God, 25. Board is your everything board, where you can save absolutely anything you like. The other is your focus board, where you will only ever have 10 saved pieces at a time. These pieces are the creme de la creme, the ones you can longingly look at for hours, the ones you would open the car door for on a first day. Step two, steal. As Pablo Picasso from Fortnite once said, good artists copy, great artists steal to these traits into your own art. Although you'll be taking inspiration from other new and more personal art style, happy stealing. Follow for more. Look, sir, I have nothing against you, but I've heard this tip like 300,000 times. So I guess we can repeat it here again. It's perfectly fine to take aspects of artists' work that you admire and implement it into your work. And by selecting the elements that you like and making it your own, that's how you come up with your art style. It's that simple. I explained this tip in about 10 seconds. Why did it take you one minute to say less than what I... Oh. Today I will teach you how to make any drawing look like a masterpiece and how to translate any image that's in your head onto the paper or canvas. You guys wanna know how to do that? It's not by watching a tips video. It's thousands of hours of practice. But you know what, I'm, I'm gonna give you a chance. The trick is actually a lot simpler than you'd think. But before we start, let me just get the canvas ready. All right, so... It's simple because it requires work. I did a little bit of drawing off camera, but I feel like just by looking at it, you could kind of just get the gist of what's going on here. Honestly, you probably don't even need a lesson. I mean, as you can see, it's basically just a bunch of organized lines and colors. But today, I will teach you how to make any drawing look like a mask. Oh, okay, it was... A it's new. Today, I will teach you how to make... <laughs> Okay, that's good. That was a troll video. I'm very glad. Cody, that's a 10 out of 10. Oh, I need some water. He got me good. He got me real good. Show me how you make your art look more finished. Finish your piece. <laughs> Add a new layer. There's no way. Show me how to make your art look more finished. Finish your piece. That's it. That's all you need to know. Are you tired from drawing hair like this? Oh boy. Ooh. Use this easy tutorial. Then go to filter and choose the seventh filter on the list. Hold up, this is 500,000 likes? I'm flabbergasted. That's it, you just flat brush in, in a shape and then you use a filter on it? That's that's it, this is supposed to be how you Oh my God. Okay, I'm like seriously questioning my life right now because the fact that 500,000 people like this means 500,000 people might have gone and tried it. Why this process? I'm tired from seeing videos like this. Bro, I'm done. This is a zero out of 10. This is just straight up not good at all. I don't know what people are doing on TikTok. You're getting all kinds of crazy information. This doesn't enhance your skill set as an artist at all. I don't understand. 500,000 likes, why? Aren't the kids nowadays just stupid? Let me show you a few techniques you can do with paint. Please be good. Okay, LGBTQ, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh. That was cool, hey, that was not bad, I like that. If you just have some paint lying around, that's a fun little thing you can do. Even if you don't swing that way, just hang it up in your room, especially if you have like immigrant parents, it'll give them a heart attack. How can we make this character more attractive? This drawing comes- Oh my god, it's Kenton Scott. Okay, so common mistakes when drawing the ear. What I see most often from students is that they simply- Students? My brother, Kenton Scott. You look like a student. <laughs> One of the most important factors to check when drawing an attractive face is going to be symmetry. I will use the nose as a base of operation. This is so depressing to me because my face is very asymmetrical. Am I ugly? I think you forgot a method. Drawing me. Get it? Because I'm a star. 
I'm going to introduce a little bit more structure into his eyebrows. I'm going to adjust the angle oh. of... <laughs> I would have kept the eyebrows straight, but that's just me. <laughs> but why are you looking at me like that? And I think we'll leave it at that for now. Let's go ahead and check. Wow, I'm I'm gonna cry. That's, you know, he is beautiful though. Just not in the right way. I want to know how you guys know when a piece of yours is done. Personally, the way I go about it is asking myself a couple of questions. Is it too busy? Is it too flat? Is there enough depth? And most importantly, is this what I want? After that, I take a look at it through my phone and looking at it from afar, like at least five steps back. I check it upside down, sideways, and even step back for a day or two. Her point about taking a picture and putting it on your phone is so valuable. Now, if you go onto my Instagram page and you look at the pieces that I have, every single one of them have gone onto my phone, stayed there for at least a couple of hours, and I've always gone back to look at that piece on my phone just to see what it looks like when I'm not expecting it. Because that's how you spot the mistakes. You just have it on hand and you just whoop it out. And you're like, oh, it's so small. And when you look at it, whatever jumps out at you is what you need to fix. That's a pro tip. Put your work onto your phone. Take a look at it throughout the day before you post it. Otherwise, you're gonna regret it. And that's it for today's art tips on TikTok. Honestly, not great. No, not. <sighs> I don't want to do this anymore. But hey, if you guys learned something new, if you were entertained by this video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out other videos that I have on TikTok art tips. I mean, I know I joke around and stuff, but a lot of this is very valuable information for younger artists. So hopefully you're taking some of this advice with you. With that being said though, I'll see you guys on the next video. Okay guys, now that all the fake fans are gone, you guys want a story time? So I am looking to get a puppy right now. And I saw this really good one listed on Kijiji, which is like the Canadian eBay. And I was like, hey, I'm interested. So I go over, I meet the puppy. I'm like, this is great. And I tell the lady, I'm interested in this puppy. And at first she's like, this puppy had a bad experience in its previous home and she had to take it back. So it's stressed and anxious and it should go with a little brother. And I was like, no, I can only have one dog right now. And that is the most responsible thing for me to do. And she's like, oh, I need to think about it. And I was like, I work from home. I'm gonna be with the puppy 24 seven. I don't see an issue here. And then she's like, I'm just so unsure. Two days later, gets back to me is like, okay, maybe we can give it a try. She brings the puppy over to my place. We play around, we get along and she's like, wow, he will be really happy here. You're such a good fit for him. He seems to really like you. And I'm like, okay, so should we do this? And she's like, okay, we can try to let him stay the night and see how he does. And I'm like, bet, let me go get some puppy food. So I went to PetSmart, I got some food, I come back, the lady's waiting and then we go up to my unit again and right when we're about to sign the papers she's like oh you know i think you're such a good fit but i'm just not emotionally ready to part with this puppy and i'm like so do you want to keep it as a pet what why are you just selling it then are you out of your mind if you like it so much keep it as your pet and she's like no i can't keep it as a pet and you're such a good fit but i'm emotionally not ready yet it's what wasted my time i'm livid anyway Anyways, stay subscribed to my channel for my puppy hunting journey. The puppy that I do get will make an appearance in my videos.